What's up, everybody? So today I am here to talk to you about bug bounties. I want to talk about what I'm calling the truth about bug bounties, my perspective about bug bounties, because I'm asked incessantly, nonstop, about bug bounties. And can you create a course about bug bounties? Can you tell me more about bug bounties? It's all the hype right now. And I want to clarify some things, my thoughts about bug bounties and those programs. So that's what we're going to talk about today. And before we do, a couple things as always. Please do hit the like button, subscribe, comment down below if you like the channel. We are doing incredibly well. Uh, and it's all thanks to you. And of course, we do have a quick ad from my sponsor. So please sit back, watch the ad, and we'll be back in 60 seconds. Today's video is brought to you by Vixing. So if you've been around the channel at all, you understand that Vixing has been a sponsor of us for quite some time now. And today we've got this little guy, which is a mouse, and it looks very weird. I, was, I wasn't I was sure about it at first, and I've had about a month now to play around with it, and I actually really like it. Uh, the nice thing is that it's designed ergonomically. It might look a little funny, but it's actually super, super comfortable. And you come in here, and you've got nice little buttons too. So you've got the little scroll wheel, of course, but you've got the DPI button that's right here. Uh, you've got forward and backwards buttons over on the side, so you actually never really have to move your hand to do anything. Uh, super comfortable. I've been using this for a month, like I said, and you can look at it. There's actually no oil or grease or stain marks on this guy whatsoever. It's super soft, and it's designed very nice. So the real reason we're here is because Vixing is having their fifth anniversary, which also means that they're doing 20% off, doing some free product giveaways, including 10 of my practical ethical hacking courses, and they're doing really nice discounts on some great items. So here's that ergonomic mouse that you just saw. And you've seen us have the keyboard and other mice on the channel as well. And they've sold like 70 million products. So obviously they're doing something right. And they're actually really fairly priced for what they are. Uh, so great product, great pricing. And I absolutely love Vixing just as a whole. So if you're interested, come to Vixing.com. You can also click on the fifth anniversary tab to learn more about the 20% off. I'll provide description or links down in the description below, and that's really it. So go check out Vixing. All right, so bug bounties. Let me preface this with saying I have nothing planned. Nothing for this video is planned. I'm just going right off the brain. I don't even know if I'm going to do any cuts or edits. This is just me talking to you about how I feel about bug bounty programs. So let's start with some of the positives, and we'll kind of go back and forth, do pros and cons. Now, positives of bug bounty programs. You can get money out of it, right? There's all kinds of money to be made. You see the millionaire hackers, people have made uh, enormous amounts of money. And the things that we see going around social media is we see these $10,000, $25,000 people making all this money at one time. What's the downside of that? Well, we don't know how much effort went into it. If you made $10,000, that's great. But if you spent a year researching that bug, what does that really equate down to? It's probably pennies on the hour, right? Uh, same thing there too as well is you don't know the technical aspects or the technicalities of those people. How strong are they in a technical aspect? We really don't know. How much time do they take to get there? We really don't know. So when we see these $10,000, we see these glorified tweets. We see these glorified posts that say, oh yeah, look at this. I made this much money. And it gets upvoted to the top because why wouldn't it? It's, it's awesome. It's great news. But we don't see a lot of the $50, $100, or kudos posts, we don't see enough of those. Or if people do post them, they don't get upvoted to the top because nobody cares because they didn't make a ton of money. And we get this almost distorted reality when it comes to bug bounties, that bug bounties are going to make you rich. Now, let's think about this. There are, I don't know, we'll, we'll say 10, maybe a little bit more, maybe a little bit less, millionaire hackers, okay? And I'm just thinking about Hacker One. There's probably other ones out there. It, it's in that ballpark. Hacker One has been around probably, what, five years ish? And these are not researched values, just things off the top of my head. But five years ish, they are just hitting around 10 millionaire hackers now over the course of time of 10 years. So the very best hackers are averaging somewhere around, what, $200,000 a year? That's good money. That's the top percent, though. Top, top percent. Now, there are some that are out there making close to a million a year on their own. Uh, one comes to mind is Doggy G. Not to point out Doggy G or anything about him. He is a legend. 
right? He's probably one of the best hackers in the world. But you look at Doggy G, and he's been doing this for 20 years. He has was a black hat before he became a white hat. Uh, and he's been doing this a very long time. So to get this idolization of him and say, hey, I want to be that guy, that's great. But think of the path that it took him to, to get to the point to where he's at. He didn't just start hacking a couple of years ago and become this legend overnight. Now, there are some people that just started hacking a couple of years ago and are doing fine. They're doing well. But the thing that I want to point out, too, is if you look at this small number of people that have become immensely successful off of this, and you also look at the bug bounty hunters that you idolize, most of them still have jobs. Most of them still work. And why is that? Well, it's because you can't predict how you're going to do in a bug bounty program. Right. So you, you can't predict that, hey, I'm going to make one hundred thousand dollars this year, guaranteed, uh, unless you are a doggy G or somebody like that. Right. So because you can't predict the amount of money you're going to make, most of these guys and girls still need jobs. They still go work a nine to five. They still hunt on the side. Now, bug bounty is great for side income. Bug bounty is great for making large chunks of money at one time. It's great to do if you're doing it in your spare time. But to think of it as a full-time job is probably a skewed perspective. And I could be going against the norm saying this, but it's definitely a skewed perspective. You can do it. People do do it. And a lot of it boils down to, to where you live, right? So if you're living in a high cost of living place like the United States versus somewhere that's a low cost of living, if I earn $50 versus somebody where it's low cost of living earning $50, that's a huge difference. So we see people from different countries doing different things. And where I, the bug bounty hunter, making $50, that's great. That could buy a, a nice dinner out for my wife and me. But for somebody else, that could be a month's worth of groceries, right? So there are perspectives, and I do understand the perspectives. But you also have to consider, too, the amount of competition. So we have competition. We have anybody can go join a bug bounty program. Hacker One's open. Bug Crowd's open. Uh, in integrity is open, right? All these platforms are wide open. Now there are private platforms and there are private programs inside of these public platforms, but you have to earn your way into those as well. So there's all this competition that you're up against where you have these people and you're up against people that are really good, really bad, just trying it out. But probably over, I would guess over a hundred thousand people are hunting on programs at any given time. That's a lot of people. That's a lot of competition to be up against, to be trying to earn a living. And when we think of the people that rise to the top, you think of 100,000 people or whatever arbitrary number I just pulled out of my ass. But you think of that, and then you think of the millionaire hackers. A percent of a percent have made that much money. Think about that logically, okay? Now, some of you, again, might be in a country where, okay, a million dollars is insane. That's like $10 million anywhere else, right? Uh, but you know, even you'd be happy with $10,000. And that's okay. I think that bug bounty programs are fine. If you keep it realistic, what is happening is we're skewing the idea of reality. When you see these posts upvoted, and you see people making $10,000, that's not realistic. That's not likely it's not probable. I would argue that there are probably way more bugs out there that make way less than $10,000. But you don't see those right. So you have to keep the reality in your mind that, hey, when I'm going to do this, I'm going to do this to try to earn some side income. I'm going to do this to try to get better. I'm going to do this to try to help programs out. Maybe I don't even want to earn money. I just want to get better at my skills. There are a lot of positives when it comes to bug bounties. But the idea and the idolization that's coming out because you can make all this money is not the right one to have. The money should be a perk for you. The money should be, you know, this is great. This is Awesome. But if you go into it with, I'm going to do this to make a living, you might come out dissatisfied. I'm not saying that everybody who's watching this right now can go out there and just are, are they're just going to fail. That's not true. There are people who are absolutely going to overcome, they're going to become the 1%, they're going to do great things. But again, that's the 1% or the 1% of the 1%. So you got to keep that in mind. If you go into bug bounty programs with the idea that I'm going to do this to learn, I'm going to do this to get better. I want to learn about cross-site scripting. So I'm going to go play around with all these websites that say, you know what, I can do, I can just go hack them. If I can find a hack, I, I can do it. And I might get paid out of it. 
that's a good reason to do a bug bounty program from a hacker perspective. Or if you're like, hey, I might want to learn some things in my free time. I might want to try to earn some money. I've got a steady job. I'm going to go try to earn some money. That's another reason to do a bug bounty program. Or, you know, hey, my government is on this bug bounty program. I really want to help my country out. I love my country, so I'm going to go hack my country and improve their security. Another reason that you might want to do a bug bounty program. And you can feel the same way, too, about uh, a brand or another company that you want to help them out because you like them. But your main motivation should not be money. It should not be financials. And I understand that is a hard concept. Okay, it is. It's a very hard concept. And some of you can tell me to go F off. That's fine. But please, please keep the reality here that bug bounties should not be a money motivator. You should do it for the passion, for the wanting to learn, for the drive. Money should be at the bottom. Money should be the benefit that you get out of this. If you take that perspective and you go into bug bounty programs, that is how I believe you will be the most successful. If you go into it saying, I want to earn $10,000 this month, and you come out and you earn nothing or you earn 50 bucks, or it takes you a year to even earn your first bug bounty, that's where you can get disappointment. That's where you can get let down. That's where you can feel bad about yourself. But you, again, have to understand that the people that are at the top, with some exceptions, have been doing this for a very, very long time. They understand these programs inside and out. They're part of private programs. They understand web hacking. It's just experience, okay? So don't get disgruntled because you're not finding anything. Uh, and don't use money as a motivator. Say, hey, I want to find one bug this month. I want to find five bugs this month. Don't think about it as I want to earn X amount of dollars. It's just not realistic. Think about improving your game. Think about finding bugs. Think about learning. And that's it. And that's really it. That's my rant. I, I don't have a ton to say. I think bug bounty programs are valuable. I think they're good for businesses. I think they're good for people. And if you have the money from a business perspective, you can have, a, what, 100,000 eyes on your program if you want it. And all those eyes looking at it are way better than one pen tester doing it during an engagement. Okay? But at the same time, you're going to pay a lot more money in bug bounties and, unless you're very, very secure. So from a business perspective, it's really great. I'd rather have 100,000 eyes on my program than one eye or two eyes, uh, or pairs of eyes, I guess I should say. Uh, but from a personal perspective, it helps you get better. It, it just absolutely helps you get better. Me personally, I do a little bit of bug bounty hunting on the side. I'm a pen tester by heart. I love pen testing. And if I said to myself, hey, I want to guarantee that I'm going to go earn $100 for the hour I'm going to work. I can do that with pen testing. I know for a fact, if I go pen test something, I'm going to average out 100 bucks on that, if not more. Now, if I go do a bug bounty program, what do I need? If I'm doing 40 hours of work, I need to earn at least $4,000 on the bug that I find. I'm not guaranteeing that I'm going to do that. Some people, maybe they can. Um, but for me personally, it's pen testing. So understand, at least from my perspective, that if you go into this again, thinking about the money, you're going in it wrong. Okay, so go in it to learn. That's the only lesson I wanted to provide here is don't get into the hype Understand that reality is skewed. Understand that what you're seeing on Twitter or on social media or anywhere else, you're seeing the best of the best being upvoted. You're seeing the best of the best being hyped. And we need to understand reality is that that's not what always happens. That is, again, the 1% of the 1%. So keep that in mind. You'll still be successful. Keep a level head. Understand that you're wanting to learn. Money is the benefit. And you can rise to the top with that motivation and that perspective. So that's it for me. Again, if you like this video, please do hit like, subscribe, comment down below, hit the bell if you want to get notifications when I release new videos. And that's it. So until next time, my name is The Cyber Mentor, and I do thank you for joining me.